as we listen to the gospel of today, we remember what Jesus said, I have not come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have come to bring them to fulfillment. And uh, <clears throat> in the second reading of today, we hear how Jesus is not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. He says, he is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, but who are these brothers and sisters? This is all of humanity from the beginning until now, which includes you and I. Jesus is not ashamed to call you and me his brother or his sister. Before the Incarnation, God becoming one of us in Jesus, humanity had no future after death. In the Incarnation, in the person of Jesus, God unites humanity with divinity and passes through a human death and then changes death into a passage into new life. He is not ashamed to call us his brothers and sisters who now have a destiny, destiny of eternal life. That is what he rectified. But then there's another situation that needed rectifying the sexual relationship between men and women, man and woman. It had fallen into becoming a passing relationship and not a permanent relationship. And Jesus says, take it back, not to Moses, but back to the Creator, to God. In complementary relationship between man and woman is a creation of God. As such, it should be respected, cared for, and nourished. What does the Bible, the Scriptures, say about this relationship of man and woman? Pope Francis, in his encyclical, The Joy of Love, can help us discover this. And I would highly recommend that you look up in your Google, by your computers, this encyclical, The Joy of Love. From the first pages of Genesis to the last pages of the book of Revelation, this intimate relationship is talked about and is ultimately used to exemplify God's intimate relationship to you and to me, the church, in our relationship, relationship to Him. He loves us as if we were a groom, if He were a groom. And we love him as if we were a bride. The Bible speaks of children as new shoots of life and of the suffering and pain that can disrupt this wonderful creation. It also speaks of work as a necessary part of this life. And finally, about tenderness as a necessary ingredient. Then the encyclical analyzes the current reality of marriage and family. The positive side today is that, by and large, there is more personal communication between spouses and there than there was in the past history, making their relationship much more humane. But also, Today, there is a tendency toward individualism. Some people define freedom as doing what the individual selfishly wants instead of looking out for the common good. 
A good number of people, says Pope Francis, suffer a loneliness because they don't have God in their lives. Some parents come home from a full day's work, tired and without strength for married and family life. In some cases, there is too much watching of TV, in moderate use of internet and cell phones, and some tendency to replace God, the Creator, with technology. So what is to be done? We need to look to Jesus to go forth with a healthy marriage and family life. Some might object, saying, Jesus was never married. How can looking to him guide those in the vocation of marriage? Jesus recognized and experienced in himself the love of God the Father. Jesus in his person reveals the love of God our Father. For love, he gave up his life for us and continues to dwell in our midst. And this love for us is indissolvable, unbreakable. In the Gospel of the Sunday, Jesus reaffirms the indissolvableness or unbreakableness of marriage. It is like his love for us, unbreakable. And he bestows on marriage and the family the grace necessary to bear witness to the love of God and to the, live the life of communion. The incarnation of the Word in a human family in Nazareth, by his very newness, changed the history of the world of that time. The example of Jesus is a paradigm for the church, his family life. He began his public ministry with a miracle at the wedding feast of Cana. He shared in everyday moments of friendship with the family of Lazarus and his sisters and with the family of the Apostle Peter. Recognizing God revealed in Jesus as the source of the husband's life and the source of the wife's life. Neither of the spouses will be alone in facing whatever challenges they may come that may come their way. Both are called to respond to God's gift with commitment, creativity, and perseverance. Marriage is firstly an intimate relationship of life and love, which is good for the spouses themselves. While sexuality is ordered to the conjugal love of man and woman, it follows that spouses to whom God has not granted children can have a conjugal life full of meaning in both human and Christian terms. Nonetheless, the conjugal union is ordered to procreation by its very nature. The child is born, does not come from outside as something added to the mutual love of the spouses, but springs from the very heart of that mutual giving as its fruits and fulfillment. Now the church is a, a large family. It is a large family. Each domestic family of husband, wife, and children is a domestic church constantly enriching the Catholic universal church family. The love that Jesus showed is patient, love is kind, love is not jealous, not boastful, is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irascible 
he was sinful, is not rejoice in wrong, but rejoices in the right. Love dares all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love always gives life. Conjugal love does not end with a couple. The couple in giving themselves to one another give not just themselves, but also the reality of children who are a living reflection of their love, a permanent sign of their conjugal unity and living inseparable synthesis of their being father and mother. After reflecting upon this reality as Jesus presents it to us, let us try to live it in the world today, those who have the vocation to married life and family. As we receive the body and blood of Christ in Holy Communion, let us feel his presence in us and his giving out to us. May husbands and wives find their strength in Jesus to live his life of self-giving, especially in marriage and in family life.